Thank you very much. I feel like this is speed dating, speech dating or something. And so, um, you know, uh, thanks to Josh and tough act to follow. Uh, so, my name is Kieran. I'm. Um, you want, where, where do you want me? Sure. What you saying is he doesn't want you to see me. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm from General Assembly. Hopefully, maybe you know General Assembly is a global tech uh, education company headquartered here in New York. We're in 15 campuses around the world. Um, and our headquarters, incidentally, for those of you that have been to the class, is actually downstairs in this building on level four. Um, now, my role there is to be general manager of our credentials team. Uh, it's a brand new unit, um, and our mission is to help people get recognized by employers for what they can do no matter where they come from. Um, and so what I want to do with this presentation is I actually want to take you through the problem we're trying to solve, um, show you our initial solution to it, some of those results, um, and where we're at next. Um, so what is the problem? The problem is that in mature professions, there's credentials to screen whether or not someone can do a job for you, right? So if you're looking for a driver, presumably like you hope they have a license. If you go into a doctor, similarly, if you're looking for a CFA or a CPA or an actuary and you know the list goes on. These are all mature professions that have been around for hundreds of years. Um, now, for new things like coding, that luxury doesn't exist. And so employers typically, typically come up with their own assessments. Um, those of you that work with engineering teams will remember the days where companies use whiteboarding challenges and they'll ask candidates to talk through problems like this or like this. And these are fine, they help determine whether or not an engineer is familiar with these kinds of concepts, but they don't rep replicate real life work. Um, and therefore they're not representative of whether or not the engineer can do the job. And so it's no surprise to see that companies have moved towards more authentic challenges like this example from PayPal, where you actually have to build a working interface as part of their assessment. So these are great. These are robust. They're accurate. They provide a real insight into what a candidate for a job can do, obviously, because you're asking them to do exactly what they would do on the job. So what's the problem with this? Well, it takes a while. These, these, these challenges take many, many hours to design, and after someone does it, many hours to grade. Um, and so recruiting teams typically don't use these challenges until the back end of a hiring process. The normal process that many of you may be familiar with looks like this. Um, you start with a resume screen, which everyone knows is an imperfect science, but we try our best. The next step is typically a non-technical interview. That's really the sniff check. Maybe is this person crazy or are they actually someone we could potentially see on the team? The third step then is your technical interview. You actually get an engineer to administer this. Right? So you ask a few questions, you figure out whether or not someone actually can back up what they say on their resume in terms of what they can do. After all of these steps, then you say, you know what, I'll give you this coding challenge. But because the coding challenge takes so long to administer, even for a small number of candidates at this end of the funnel, it's a ton of time. And the other issue is that time is a very valuable time. That's your engineer's time when they could be doing stuff, but they're evaluating candidates instead. And so this is the problem. You've got these terrific assessments that are in no way scaled. And so, yes, yeah, so over 100 hours, we work with a whole bunch of companies um, to, to come up with that number. Um, so what we then did was we got a bunch of companies together and we said, this is a problem. Do you think we could solve it? And, and they were kind enough to collaborate with us on that. And I'll talk more about what the companies actually do in a second. Um, and so together, we had a brilliant idea, which was, you know, build assessment, replicating real life work, because you're already doing that and you're doing it well. Um, and then create technology to automatically create those assessments. Um, what I want to actually do is, I think these assessments are so hard to really relate to unless you see it. So I actually had our product manager record himself you know, taking this assessment. Um, and I'd like to show you that video now. Um, hopefully the sound plays. Two JavaScript credentials assessment. And 
All right, so I'm taking my first go, front end level two JavaScript credentials assessment, and I'm really nervous. Uh, let's see what I have to do. For this assessment, you'll be working on the Explorer Science and Technology website. Okay, well, I invented Science and Technology, so that should be fine. All right, before you start, download the code base. You'll need it for your assessment. That much I can do. All right, so here it is. Show me what you got. Put this guy on his top for safety. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good. That's, that didn't happen in the real assessment. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm taking my first go. No, I'm just session be fine. That one, here it is. Show me what you can do. This guy on this. Let's take a look. Bring that into this blind text. I got the code base. This much I know. Indexation. I want to start there. And this looks about twice as long as any website I've seen in my first four weeks of you. But, uh, you know, composure, right? Okay. Open a browser. Let's take a look at it. All right, the Explorer. It's got a uh, fairly static nav bar up here. Beautiful site, I gotta say. Wow, good design. So yeah, fairly static, looks like got some functionality, but not built out. All right, let's take a look at what I need to build. All right, what do we got? Create some navigation bar, no idea to do that. Add a photo slideshow, that sounds hard. Load articles from the archive, definitely a chance for me. I am halfway through the view. So let's start here. Create some navigation bar, blah, 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 some instructions. Ooh. Okay, so this is the effect I need to build. Got this sub nav bar, somehow I have to make these other options appear. All right, let's see what I can do. That's why they paid me the big bucks. Uh, let's see, what do we got? JS. Nav.js. Okay. Blank. I'm going to fill it out. <laughs> so that's the full functionality right there. Now, upload it. Boom. So, don't come on, everybody. He's not here in the room, but uh, I'll tell him that you got too well this evening. Um, a couple of things to notice about that, that assessment that really replicate real life work. One is the candidate has to work in their own environment. We don't create some kind of development environment for them, for them to code in because what we learned from talking to them was they hate doing that. They want to use their own tools. Um, second of all, they always work off an existing code base. It's very rarely the case that you start from scratch and almost always that you integrate know, with someone else's work. Um, and so you can see in the assessment that we really try to um, replicate that and have them work on things that what, exactly what they would do on the job. Um, what we then do is we actually grade and pop out a score out of 800. I'll come back to that. Um, what we actually grade on is three things, and all of this is programmatic. So first of all, we grade on whether the thing works. That's 75% of the grade, and we run a battery of unit tests to make sure that all the functionality actually happened. Second of all, we measure the computational effort required to run that code. And then lastly, we actually give the candidate a style guide to adhere to, and we count how many violations of that style guide they make. So that's indenting, semicolons, and things like that. And so that's 5% of the result. We aggregate all of that to get back to this score out of 800. Um, and so the exciting thing about this is that we can actually take an authentic challenge that normally takes hours to grade and do it instantly. Um, so the question is, we can do it instantly and what do the results look like? Um, you can see here the range of scores that we've had so far between 200 and 800. And you can see a really widespread. Um, the most important reason to want a widespread is that you want the best candidates to be able to distinguish themselves. You want to see candidates in the middle that have some potential maybe, maybe but aren't top candidates yet. And then you want to see who you can eliminate in the hiring process. Now, as you look at this, I hope you're asking me that here and are the right people actually doing well. Because if you've got top people in a company doing badly, that's not good for this assessment. So we can actually break out those dots um, across three groups, where group one were graduates and job seekers, group two were advanced professionals, and group three were experts. 
and you can see this nice upward march as you go from left to right across the screen. This gives us a lot of confidence that it definitely works, the right people do well. And I want to come back to the companies that you saw the logos on the screen. They're really helping us in three ways. One is helping us decide what to test, like what skills do they actually look for. Two, how should we assess those skills? What are the right types of challenges to set? And then three, they're actually lending us professionals from their teams to test our tests and allow us to check the validity using exercises like this. Um, so those, those assessments allow these companies to use, um, to use them in, in, in a couple of different ways. One is obviously identifying candidates in a hiring process. And so companies like Priceline and MLB and Pearson and Enforth were all using these assessments to find candidates. Uh, the second way is to actually benchmark your team's existing capabilities. Um, and of course that leads into guiding investments into training. And so we've got a whole bunch of Fortune 500 companies actually using these assessments for that purpose as well. Um, what we've got right now is we've got four assessments live, two in digital marketing and two in front-end web development. Um, we're actually now building out assessments across the rest of this table that you can see. Um, and we're inviting companies to use the assessments we have so far at no fee in return for actually advising us on the next set of assessments. So if you're interested in any of that, please do let me know. Um, that's it, thank you very much. Are these like customizable so we can what, tell you guys what you would like to buy at potential candidates? Yeah, so the question was are these assessments customizable? The answer is no. Um, and the reason is we're trying to aggregate the skills that are relevant across companies and also to be able to provide you with benchmarks that are relevant across candidates. The idea eventually, actually, the reason that the team is called credentials is that we want to issue credentials to people who pass these assessments. And these assessments have to be a common skills for those credentials to be meaningful. Not credentials, like what are you scanning for? Like what are the different Oh, So what we, what we mean by credential is an award. So when you pass a CFA exam, you get the CFA. The idea here would be if you pass our front end of two, which was the assessment that you saw, mm -hmm. we would designate you an FE as an FE2. Or if you pass level three, we designate you as an FE3. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. So, uh, with the technology and uh, changing so rapidly, how do we ensure that that is always up to date and these uh, credentials are always in the last? What would the conversation Yeah, that's yeah, a big challenge. The question was around how we keep things relevant. Um, it actually ties in with our sort of anti cheating approach. What we're doing is we're refreshing these assessments every few months with new content. And so that new content wants to test the same competencies, if those competencies are still relevant, but also updating those competencies as we go as well. So they're, they're not static, these assessments are changing every few months. Yeah. My question was similar to that, but I'm just like randomization, so you don't have someone taking multiple tests and multiple times of these work features. And in yeah. addition to that, um, I know people like uh, companies like Coursera actually track their typing patterns to ensure that they are consistent <laughs> towards yourself. Like, how do you ensure that somebody's not going to test for other people? Yeah, so, so the question is how do you make sure um, that the people that are taking it are the people actually taking it? Um, and so, how we do that right now is in two ways. One is um, we only release the assessment to registered individuals, uh, but it doesn't stop them from taking it with someone else. What we're looking at doing is actually having employee verification post assessment so that you could actually endorse someone's test score or actually challenge it. Um, the third way and more intensive is what you're suggesting around content randomization. We could also do it in a testing center. Um, but there's, there's a whole bunch of different solutions and the short answer is that we haven't decided which one to use yet. So the common skills are, I mean, the, the 
are technical and they're related directly to these levels on, on this page. What we try to do is package up the employable skill at each level. So you can see for level one, for a front-end developer, it's really about building visually appealing websites exactly the specification. So that's, that's sort of that kernel. For level two, it's around interactivity. Um, for level three, it's around single state apps. And so what we try to do with companies is distill each level of employable skill into uh, sort of a, 